Hi, my name's Sheena Pinnell. You might know me from my podcast, Spooky Stitches, as Sheena Peril, or you might know me from my author appearances as Sophia Beaumont. I'm the author of 11 novels, and I write under both of those names. Um, I'm also an amateur historian, and I'm trained in art conservation with an emphasis in textiles. My training happened in Florence, Italy, which is a great place to learn about art, history, and textiles, as you can probably imagine. And you can't live in Florence without learning something about the Medici. This wealthy merchant family shaped Florence and Tuscany as a whole for well over 200 years. While I was there, I became fascinated by the life of Eleonora de Toledo, a Spanish noble woman raised in Naples who was married to Cosimo de' Medici when she was a teenager. This fascinating woman was educated, headstrong, and filthy rich. She didn't just inherit her money, she was a fantastic businesswoman, and her husband frequently borrowed money from her in order to fund his military campaigns. Eleonora died in 1562 in Pisa with two of her teenage sons. The city was quarantined due to an outbreak of malaria, but Eleonora was already in the late stages of tuberculosis, which she had suffered from since at least her mid-twenties. She was dressed hurriedly for burial, and their bodies were shipped back to Florence for a hasty funeral. Over the centuries, the Medici vaults have been disturbed many times. They have been flooded, robbed, and exhumed for scientific study. In the 1930s, several tombs were opened and a group of phrenologists scraped the remaining mummified skin from the skulls so that they could do a study of them. Um, Unfortunately, they destroyed not just the bodies, but also damaged the contents of the coffins. Decades later, in the 1990s, the clothing of Eleonora, one of her sons, and her husband were found in storage, a box filled with moldy fabric that had been shoved aside while still damp from the grave. An intensive conservation project began, and in the early 2000s, the remains of the clothing were put on display at Palazzo Pitti, the rambling palace Eleonora bought for her growing family. There are many interesting aspects to Eleonora's burial garments, from the way she was dressed to the clothing items chosen, but by far my favorite are her stockings. These stockings are in tragic condition with many losses. The conservators did a marvelous job of preserving what is left, but the fragile material still leaves a lot of unanswered questions. These silk stockings are the earliest surviving example we have of hand knit stockings, and they are unusual in a lot of different ways. For starters, they use an elaborate pearl stitch pattern, which would have been new and innovative at the time, as our records for the pearl stitch only go back to about the mid 1500s when Eleonora was buried. There's also some dispute about how the heels were made, And since this is a patterned heel, the style that was used just isn't in common use today. Since I first saw these stockings on display, I have wanted to recreate them. Not just because they're beautiful, but just trying to figure out how they work. This is one of the goals of what I'm calling the Eleonora Project. The project is three-pronged. The first part is already in progress. I hope to make a stitch-by-stitch recreation of the existing originals as close to accurate as possible. It's my hope that one day these might go on display at a museum or be showcased somewhere else so that others can see how they would have looked when they were new and how they might have been made. I also want to recreate an updated version of the stockings using modern techniques and sock yarn and scaled up from the original silk thread and itty bitty needles um, and the small shoe size that Eleonora wore to something that is a little bit more accurate for modern wear. Um, I also want to write patterns for both of these so that they will exist in the future for other knitters to recreate. Part two is an updated version of her burial dress and bodice using modern materials. I realized the cut of this dress is not very different from a 1950s swing dress, 
So I want to use this style as my base for the reproduction to make something that I can wear as part of my everyday wardrobe. Part three is probably the most ambitious. It's not just because I haven't fully made up my mind yet, but no matter which route I choose, it's going to be very labor intensive. Originally, I wanted to embroider silk to make a version of Eleonora's famous court gown painted by Bronzino. However, after further contemplation, I realized that while I enjoy embroidery, it's not really my craft of choice. It's not where my expertise lay. Um, knitting is. So I'm also considering turning the embroidery into a color work pattern and making a sweater based on this gown. If you want to help me decide, see progress on the project, or read about my research to the history and culture and also into Eleonora's life as a person, um, please visit the project's website. You can also support the project by checking the links to Ko-Fi and Patreon. Your support not only helps keep a roof over my head and keep the lights on, but it pays for things like reference books and the silk yarn and fabric that go into this project, which can be quite pricey. And while you're down there, you might want to check out my personal website where I talk about writing and history in general. Um, I do have 11 books for sale, like I said, and you might find something that interests you. I write mostly historical fiction, so you know, you might find something that you like down there. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Ciao!